Now, efficacy is a pretty important term. Efficacy is really just an ability of a drug to produce a result. It's not dependent on dose. It's not dependent on real-life experience. Real-life experience has a different definition. But efficacy is basically, can the drug make a difference? Does it do what it's supposed to do? The only thing that dose is involved in is whether or not the drug passes efficacy trials at the dose that's tested. It might be an efficacious drug, but it might not be efficacious at a certain dose. But it's still efficacious if it, if it actually, I'm sorry, let me back up. So the definition is just the ability to, to, to produce the desired result. However, it doesn't mean it's going to pass efficacy trials because sometimes the desired result may be a little higher than you, than you would expect to see. So that's more like effectiveness. If, if something is, is efficacious or produces the result in real life setting, that means it's effective. So that's kind of the difference between efficacy and effectiveness. According to the FDA, the basis of how we determine efficacy from phase two trials and phase three trials is phase two studies, you start to gauge efficacy. You don't, there's not a strong enough, typically a large enough N to really determine whether or not there's true efficacy there. But, uh, but you can start to gauge whether or not the drug is doing what it's supposed to do. Phase three trials definitely are used, though, to confirm efficacy. And effectiveness, as I've just stated, is what is accomplished in a real setting. So this even includes noncompliance issues. So if, if, if people aren't, aren't compliant but overall it's effective, then you know that it's working. Treatment arms. This is sometimes confusing to people. What is a treatment arm? So I think it's important just to discuss quickly. So basically, any group of subjects that's being treated in a certain fashion is considered a treatment arm. So you might have a group of subjects that are all taking your investigational product at a certain dose. That is one treatment arm. Then you have a group of subjects that are taking placebo. That is considered a treatment arm. So the number of treatment arms that you're going to have in your study depends on a lot of different factors. The type of study, what the objectives are, how many controls are being used. You might have a placebo control and another comparator, such as a standard of care. So even your control group is getting, maybe getting no treatment at all is considered a treatment arm. So basically, each different type of category that the subjects are getting drug administered or, or somehow being intervened, that is a treatment arm. OK, now you get to use your green checks and red Xs. This is your first knowledge check. Efficacy and effectiveness are the same thing. The green check if you think it's true. And click the red X for false, please. Excellent. That is false. Good job. Thank you. All right. Now I'm just going to go very briefly through writing basics uh, as a medical writer. The writing styles and basics are very important. There are certain things that we do as writers that people who are just reviewing protocols may not even see or think about when they're reviewing. One of the most important things to know about writing any regulatory document is that it's collaborative. Content, however, is only half of the document. You know, when I first started writing protocols, which was a long time ago, I worked actually as a I was running clinical trials and had to start writing protocols as part of that job, I would just think the content was all that mattered. In. And I didn't understand why people were talking about formatting and things. However, content is, is very important, but, and it's much of what we're going to talk about today. But the formatting is just as important. It helps with flow, your organization, your consistency, and standardization. That's what the common technical document is all about, standardizing. So as you learn to write documents, you'll learn that certain things are just as important, which have to do with the way that you write, how you format your document, and all kinds of, of templating and things that are very important, which we'll just talk about quickly in a few minutes. I've included a handout here. It has a lot of different sort of tips for writing and writing basics. So feel free to look at that when you get some time. I think it's just some basic things, but things you need to just keep aware of. There's no certain shortcuts for writing that makes, it, makes your writing faster and easier. Uh, understand punctuation and capitalization, when to use all of those things. Spelling and grammar are very important. There are rules for abbreviations and the first time you use them. And know when to put in text and when to put in tables. So these are things to start thinking about when you're writing. The key, really, to writing is knowing your audience. There's all, for protocol, there are so many different people that uh, that really look at these documents when you think about it. Regulatory review, definitely here in the US, FDA, we've got three different regulatory divisions, drugs, biologics, and CDRH for devices and diagnostics. And there are other national authorities that have their own breakdowns and their, old, their own structures as well. The regulatory review is very important. 
You also have IRBs that have to review and approve, or ethics committees that have to review and approve your protocols. CROs might be used, and they have to implement the protocols. And the site personnel, this is really the end user when you think about it, the site personnel, these are the most critical people. Because especially if you have a multi-center study, if you have different sites that are interpreting your protocol differently, you're going to come up with different data at each site. And that's really not the goal, right? Because how do you analyze those data? If, they, if things, different things are being collected because there's a misconception or a misunderstanding of how the protocol uh, is written or to be interpreted. So, so at the end of the day, the site personnel is really your end user, and that is the most critical audience to, to, take, to keep in mind. 